Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. So recently IIT Bombay has changed their syllabus a little bit to the each branches. So according to the new syllabus, uh, we have made these charts in our best possible ways and these charts basically give you an idea how to prepare your own charts because ultimately you have to make your own charts of every subject and after that you will get that confidence. So basically these charts will give you the ideas and perfect information after referring all the reference books. Now the third subject is machine design. So basically machine design includes three charts in which all the concepts of the machine design will be covered. Let's begin with the first chart of machine design which is for the theories of failures different types of stresses then principal stresses then more circles then principal shear stresses then pure bending and pure shear then normal shear stress theory then after the shear stress theory then the hydrostatic loading and distortion theory as well so let's begin one by one this example gives you the idea that why we don't use in every examples the principal stresses equations or the theory of failures equations so let's see the example there is an example like the load is acting on the end of the beam then the yield strength is given as 300 ampere then f is equal to 3 then finding the value of d so you can use the equation of sigma b is equal to mi by i which is equal to p into l into d by t upon pi by 64 into d raised to 4 so the value of the d will be 13.8 mm not axial load but the bending load is there and the second one is tau max is very less than less than then sigma max then principal stresses are not calculated because sigma max is equal to sigma b and theories of failures is not used because by maximum normal stress theory or maximum shear stress theory or by distortion energy theory the values of the sigma b will be remain same now coming towards the types of stresses first one is normal stress or second one is shear stress that can be applied on any area then two types of forces can be applied perpendicular to the axis and per parallel to the axis then second one is axial stress it is also known as the normal stress sigma x is equal to p by a so first one is bending stress you can find the value of sigma b by the equation of sigma by y is equal to m by i is equal to e by r so sigma b is equal to m y upon i then sigma x is also equal to 32m by pi d cube and sigma b max is equal to 32m by pi d cube. Okay. Then third one is torsional shear stress. You can find the value of tau by the equation of t by j is equal to g into theta tau upon l in is equal to tau upon r. So tau is equal to r into t by j. Then the value of tau max is equal to 16t by pi d cube. There is one example which was asked in the ESC 2019. Then there is a note here if a circular shaft is subjected to a constant bending moment and constant twisting moment, then which will remain the constant? Then the answer is tau max remains same but sigma b will be changed because the equation of tau max is equal to 16 d by pi d cube and equation of sigma b is equal to my by i where y is the vertical distance from the center line so y will be changed during the bending moment and testing moment so the value of sigma b will be changed then here two more examples are there you can take a screenshot if you want to calculate it then coming towards the principal stresses first one is the principal normal stress sigma 1 or 2 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus or minus under root sigma x minus sigma y by 2 square plus tau xy square for checking sigma 1 plus sigma 2 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y which is equal to sigma theta plus sigma 90 plus theta then sigma max is equal to maximum of sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 here remember that for finding the values of sigma max only consider the values of the sigma do not consider the sign convection for that 
Then after the most important topic for the heat examination from the MD subject is Mohr's circle. So for making the Mohr circles, three steps are there. First one is on the x axis draw the normal stress, on the y axis draw the shear stress, and second one is obtain and plot the two points as P of sigma x and tau xy and Q of sigma y and minus tau xy. Then in the third step, draw the circle by taking line PQ as a diameter. Then theta m is equal to 2 theta in more circles and tau max is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 which is also equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2. Then the normal stress on the plane of maximum shear says sigma is equal to sigma x tau xy tau xz tau xy sigma y and tau yz tau xz tau yz and sigma z and one more note is there sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z then principal shear stresses tau 1 2 is equal to plus or minus under root sigma x minus sigma y by 2 square plus tau xy square then tau 1 is equal to tau 1 2 is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 and tau 1 3 is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 and tau 2 3 is equal to sigma 2 minus sigma 3 by 2 here do not consider the sign then after tau max is equal to maximum of tau 1 2 tau 1 3 and tau 2 3 here remember that tau 1 2 is always maximum in the plane shear stress condition pure bending and pure shear in the pure bending the example is that that of the horizontal beam is hinged at one end then vertical load is given to at the other end then sigma max is equal to sigma 1 is equal to sigma x then tau max is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 and tau max is equal to sigma x by 2 then theta is equal to 45 here you can see the mode circle for the pure bending process then coming towards the pure shear, the pure shear, the normal on the plane of maximum shear stress is equal to 0. Then theta is equal to 45 and 135 degree for maximum and minimum values of sigma. Then for the ductile material, it must be designed for the shear stress and tau xy is equal to tau max is equal to 16t upon pi d cube. Then there is one table for the different terms like load and material and theta failure and due to which stress the failure will be occurred. So for the uniaxial load and ductile material at theta is equal to 45, the failure will occur due to the tau max. Then after for uniaxial brittle material theta is equal to 0 then due to sigma max the failure will be occurred. Then for the torsion in the ductile material theta is equal to 0 then tau max is the cause for the failure then the last one is if torsion is given to the brittle material then theta is equal to 45 and 135 due to the sigma max the failure will be occurred after first one is normal stress theory which is also known as the maximum normal stress theory or Rankine's theory or you can say that the theory for the brittle material so sigma max is equal to SUT by FOS and sigma max is equal to SYT by FOS then after the second one is shear stress theory you can say that maximum shear stress theory or Tresca Coulomb gas theory or the theory for the ductile material the equation will be like tau max is equal to SSY by FOS is equal to SYT by 2 into FOS where tau max is equal to maximum of tau 1 to tau 1 3 and tau 2 3 similarly sigma max is equal to maximum of sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 then the then the third one is the then after the third one is distortion energy theory here the diagram will be like ellipse shape and remember that for the mssd theory the shape of the diagram will be like hexagonal and for the first one which was 
MNST theory, the shape of the diagram will be like rectangular. The distortion energy theory as CS strain energy theory and also von Mises Huber Hankey theory and the ductile materials theory. So sigma Vm is equal to under root 1 by 2 into sigma x minus sigma y square plus sigma x minus sigma z square plus sigma y minus sigma z square plus 6 into under root tau x y square plus tau x z square plus tau y z square then sigma vm is equal to under root sigma 1 square minus sigma 1 into sigma 2 plus sigma 2 square then sigma vm is equal to syt by fos and ssy is equal to syt by under root 3 which is also equal to sigma vm by root 3 here remember that for sigma 1 greater than 0 and sigma 2 less than 0 msst greater than det greater than mnst for the conservation point of view and for sigma 1 greater than 0 and sigma 2 greater than 0 MSST is equal to MNST then equivalent TM and BM by the MNST and MSST the equations of strain will be like epsilon 1 is equal to sigma 1 minus mu into sigma 2 plus sigma 3 by E then epsilon 2 is equal to sigma 2 minus mu into sigma 1 plus sigma 3 upon E and the third one is epsilon 3 is equal to sigma 3 minus mu into sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by E here epsilon v is equal to del v by d here epsilon v is equal to del v by v and epsilon v is also equal to epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 which is also equal to epsilon v is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 into 1 minus 2 into mu upon e so sigma 1 or sigma 2 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus or minus under root sigma x minus sigma y by 2 square plus tau into x y square. Here three main important equations are there. First one is m is equal to 1 by 2 into m plus under root m square plus t square. Then m is also equal to 1 by 2 into m plus t where t is equal to under root m square plus t square. And m e always greater than m, t always greater than t and t always greater than me then t into fos is equal to constant remember this thing also then under root m square plus t square into fos is equal to constant okay. pi d cube into m square plus c square which is equal to syt by 2 into fos then sigma max is equal to 16 by pi d cube into m plus m square plus 2 square which is equal to sigma 1 then strain energy is equal to area under the sigma and epsilon curve and area up to elastic limit will be resilience and area up to plastic limit will be toughness. Now the design of the shaft as rotating shaft is varying bending stress like first one is dynamic then fluctuating then third one is photic theory and then the static theories. In the static theory, first one is by MNST, then after by MSST, and the last one is DET. So if in the examination nothing is given, then use these priorities number for the design of the shaft. And here remember that there are some notes here. MNST is used for the brittle material, then MSST is used for the ductile material as well as in this theory, simple calculation is there and more safety as well as most conservative theory this example or you can say that this question was asked more than two to three times in the examination which is most conservative theory then the answer will be like mssd and if the question will be asked like if which is most accurate theory then the answer will be like det which means det is used for ductile material and also it is having difficult calculation and most accurate theory as well as the most economical and more dimension in this theory then for the hydrostatic loading sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 and tau x y is equal to tau y z is equal to tau x z is equal to 0 for this type of loading MSST DET cannot be used and the more circles will be like the point for the hydrostatic loading then after the fourth theory from the five types of theories of failure is the principal strain energy theory 
the shape of the safe area will be like the shape of parallelogram and the equation will be like sigma 1 minus mu into sigma 2 plus sigma 3 is equal to SYT by FOS which is also known as the St. Venance equation then the last one is the principle or total strain energy theory the shape will be like ellipse and this theory is also known as the Bellramy and Hayes theory the equation will be like sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square plus sigma 3 square minus 2 into mu into sigma 1 2 plus sigma 2 3 plus sigma 1 3 is equal to SYT by FOS square. There are some examples for the theory. You can take a screenshot of the examples and if you want to calculate then you can note down. So this is all about the first chart of the machine design in which we have covered the, all the theories of failures and all the important equations of the basics. So we hope that you like this video. Please do like and subscribe to the BS Academy channel and if it is useful to your other friends then please share this video to them also and for the upcoming video of chart 2 of machine design please press the bell icon in which we will cover the dynamic loading as well as the design for welded joint and rivet design also if you like and share this video thank you so much Hello and welcome to the BS Academy channel. Now in the third subject of the machine design which include there are three charts and from which the second chart is here for the machine design subject. So in the second chart we will cover the design for the dynamic loading as well as the design for welded joints and the rivet design at the end of the video. All the important equations will be covered in this chart. Let's begin with the first and most important topic for the gate examination from the machine design subject which is design for the dynamic loading. From this topic in every year mostly there may be one question for the reversible stress or repeated stress. So as you can see here for the reversible stress sigma m is equal to sigma max plus sigma min by 2 and sigma a is equal to sigma max minus sigma min by 2 and sigma a is equal to sigma max is equal to sigma min and sigma m is equal to sigma min is equal to zero then for the repeated stress sigma max is equal to 100 and sigma min is equal to zero then sigma min is equal to 50 then sigma a is also equal to 50 then sigma a is equal to sigma m is equal to sigma max by 2 because sigma min is equal to zero for the repeated stress then for option you can cross check the three conditions here sigma m plus sigma a is equal to sigma max then second one is sigma m minus sigma a is equal to sigma min and third one is sigma f1 plus sigma 2 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y then remember one thing that design of connecting road is based on the endurance strength because it experiences the dynamic load and the connecting road is made by the forging process then third one is static loading for that the diagram is shown here like horizontal line and if sigma is equal to 100 MPa then sigma max is equal to 100 and sigma min is equal to 100 and sigma m is equal to 100 and sigma a is equal to 0 then for dynamic load the diagram is shown here then stress ratio r is equal to sigma min by sigma max and amplitude ratio is equal to sigma a by sigma m is equal to sigma max minus sigma min divided by sigma max plus sigma min from these four to five equations there are so many examples were asked in the gate examination these are some examples then after stress concentration for the flat plate circular hole the equation will be like sigma 0 is equal to p upon b minus t into t which is equal to p upon a min and for the flat plate elliptical hole kt is equal to 1 plus 2 into a by b sigma 0 is equal to 
p upon a min which is equal to p upon b minus a into t then theoretical stress concentration factor kt and for circular hole flat plate kt is equal to 3 which is maximum then kt is equal to sigma max upon sigma naught then here remember that one naught is here the stress concentration factor kt is not calculated for the static load and the ductile material then failure in dynamic loading so note is there in brittle and ductile material both the failure always occur perpendicular to the direction of applied load and strain is not cause of the failure in the dynamic loading then one more note is there applying the compressing residual stress life will increase number of cycle to be performed will increase and decrease the expansion rate of crack for decreasing the expansion rate of crack there are two processes like a short blasting method and auto retage method then the other one is the rotating beam method rr more method is also known as the rotating beam method for that the SN curve is there for the XN curve the curve is drawn for the log of sigma a versus the log of n here sigma a is the amplitude stress and n is equal to number of cycles then for fatigue life n is equal to 1000 the value of log n is equal to 3 so Fatigue strength SE is equal to 0.9 into SUT for N is equal to 1000 or you can say that log N is equal to 3. And in the SN curve, the SN curve becomes asymptotic after the value of number of cycles is greater than that of 10 raised to 6 cycles. One more note is there when the applied stress sigma UT is less than or equal to SE, then the life of the component is infinite and AC less than or equal to AC days and AC days is equal to 0.5 into SUT if SUT is less than the 1400 megapascal then AC days is equal to 700 megapascal if SUT will greater than the 1400 megapascal then after Soderberg, Goodman and Gerber's equation is there first one is the Soderberg line for that the equation will be like sigma a upon ac plus sigma m upon syt is equal to 1 upon fis then for the goodman line sigma a by ac plus sigma m by sut which is equal to 1 upon fos and most conservative theory is soderberg line theory and syt or sut always greater than ac so you can check the diagram for the three lines here the lower is Soderberg line, then after the Goodman line, and then after the Gerber's line, which is also known as Gerber's parabola. Then for reversible load, note that Soderberg line is equal to Goodman line is equal to Gerber's parabola line. Then for the modified Goodman diagram, the sigma a is equal to p upon b minus d into t, and for reversible load, sigma m is equal to zero. For the Goodman line, SUT will be considered sigma a upon SE plus sigma m upon SUT is equal to 1 upon f for S. Then TM upon SSY plus TA upon SSE is equal to 1 upon FOS. Here FOS is greater than or equal to 1 for infinite life. FOS will less than 1 for the finite life. Then for the combined loading, equation will be like sigma vm is equal to 1 root sigma x square plus 3 into tau xy square. Then sigma m is equal to 1 root sigma xm square plus 3 into tau xy m square. And sigma a is equal to 1 root sigma x a square plus 3 into tau xy a square. Then use Soderberg or Goodman equations. Then for cyclic loading, n is equal to life in cyclic load then n1 is equal to life when only sigma 1 is applied and small n1 is equal to total number of cycles when sigma 1 is applied 
then alpha 1 is equal to fraction or percentage of life when sigma 1 is applied and damage by sigma 1 in one cycle is equal to 1 upon capital N1 then total damage by sigma 1 is equal to 1 upon alpha is equal to N1 upon N1 where alpha is equal to N1 by N1 then equation is there capital N1 upon N1 is equal to capital N2 by N2 plus capital N3 by N3 is equal to 1 remember that this equation you can use for the cumulative damage after that the Maynard's equation is there the equation will be like alpha 1 upon n1 plus alpha 2 upon n2 plus alpha 3 upon n3 is equal to 1 upon n now the value of se in the equation of sigma a upon se plus sigma m upon syt or sut is equal to 1 upon fos you have to take the value of s is equal to k into kb into kc into kd into sc dash into 0.5 sut upon 1 plus q into kt minus 1 here k is equal to surface finish factor kb is equal to size factor kc is equal to reliability factor kd is equal to modified stress concentration factor then kf is equal to fatigue or dynamic stress concentration factor here by increasing the k the ac will decrease by increasing the kb ac will also decrease and by decreasing the kc ac will increase then remember that notch sensitivity q is equal to kf minus 1 upon kt minus 1 for cold working process ac will increase and surface finish will increase because residual compressive stress is are generated in the cold working process then in the rolling process the ac will lesser than that of the grinding process then design for welded joints in that first one is butt joint weld the equation of tau max is equal to tau 1 2 is equal to under root sigma x by 2 square plus tau xy square then tau max is also equal to ssy by fos is equal to syt by 2 into fos then t is equal to h by under root 2 then after the second one is the lap joint fillet weld in that two types are there first one is parallel weld and the second one is transverse weld the angle in parallel weld will be 45 degree and for transverse weld the theta is equal to 67.5 degree Then for the parallel weld process, tau max is equal to under root 2 into P upon H into L. Then tau max is equal to P by T into L and tau max is equal to 1.414 into P upon H into L. Then for transverse weld, tau max is equal to 1.21 into P1 upon H into L and total weld length is L is equal to 2 into L. Here the parallel weld is more weaker than the transverse weld. So the design is always based on the parallel weld. Then for bolt loading, first one is bolt of uniform strength. For that the strain energy U is equal to sigma square by 2E into AL. Then DH is equal to under DS square minus DC square. Then C is equal to KB upon KB plus KM and PB is equal to C into P. Then PCM is equal to 1 minus C into P and RB is equal to PI plus C into P. Then RCM is equal to 1 minus C into P minus PI. Here PI greater than or equal to 1 minus C into P. And P is equal to P into by 4 into D square of 4 upon N. Then stresses in the bolt H is equal to 2BN where n is equal to number of threads in contact b is equal to thickness of thread and h is equal to height of nut then sigma t is equal to pi upon pi by 4 into dc square then tau is equal to rl upon n into pi by 4 d square minus dc square into beta and sigma bearing is equal to rb upon n to pi by 4 into d square minus dc square then p is equal to sut upon fos into a and load per unit volt is equal to p is equal to syt by fos into a then the last topic is rivet design in that the types of riveted joint 
first one is single riveted left joint then second one is double riveted left joint then fourth one is single riveted single strap butt joint and fifth one is single riveted double sear double strap butt joint there are mainly four types of questions may be asked from this topic of rivet design first one is in the example n is unknown in the second one is n is known in the third type of question p is unknown then fourth type of question eccentric loading is given so for the the n is unknown then use these steps like for finding the value of tau use the equation of p upon pi by 4 into d square n then ps is equal to t into pi by 4 into d square n then tearing failure of plate pt is equal to sigma t into p minus d into t then crushing failure of rivet pc is equal to sigma c into n into d into t then for solid plate eta tearing is equal to 1 minus d by p which is also equal to pt by p and eta searing is equal to ps by p and eta crushing is equal to pc by p then one more note is there strength of the rivet joint will be taken from the minimum of ps pc and pt then strength of the rivet will be taken from minimum of ps and pc and eta joint is equal to minimum of eta t eta s and eta c then the second type of questions in which n is known then the value of a and e are same so pt at a and pt at e is equal to sigma t into b minus d into t then pt at bb and dd are same so value of pt is equal to sigma t into b minus 2d into t plus tau into pi by 4 d square then value of pt at cc section is sigma t into b minus 3d into t plus 3 into tau into pi by 4 d square here 1 and 3 are the remaining values of the rivet then in the third type of questions in which p is unknown then equate pc and ps that means by ps is equal to pc tau into pi by 4 d square n is equal to sigma c into n into d into t and use the p for the searing and crushing for finding the diameter and diameter is more in the searing so in the design it always based on the searing process then after the fourth one is eccentric loading in which you have to find the two types of forces first one is the primary force which is always opposite to the external loads direction and for the secondary force it is perpendicular to the radial line then the equation for the primary force will be like p des is equal to p upon n where n is equal to number of rivets for finding the value of the secondary force pp des is equal to p into e into rp upon sigma r naught square so these are main two equations for the eccentric loading then you have to calculate some examples at your own for the practice of eccentric loading so this is all about the second chart of machine design in which we have considered the design for the dynamic loading as well as the failure in dynamic loading then the Soderbergh equation, Goodman equation and the Grubler's equation then after the design of welded joints and rivet design at the end so we hope that you have liked this video so please if you like this video please do like and subscribe to the BS Academy channel and press the bell icon for the upcoming video of the machine design chart 3 in which we cover design of brakes then design of clutch then design of bearings if you think that this video is helpful to your other friends also who is preparing for the gate examination then please share this video to them also thank you so much hello and welcome to the vs academy in the third subject of the gate mechanical 2021 
which is machine design this is the third chart of the machine design which is final chart of this subject in this chart we will include the various topics like first one is design of brakes then after design of clutch then after design of bearings now let's begin with the first one which is the design of brakes as you can see here first one is block or shoe brake and for that the equation of p will be like p is equal to n into a plus mu c upon b then for counter clockwise rotation p is equal to n into a minus mu c upon b then after self energizing brake in that load is applied to the downward direction when the movements of the external braking load p and the frictional force in the same direction about the hinge then the self energizing brake will be produced then after self locking brake p less than or equal to 0 and a less than or equal to mu c in that condition self locking brake will be generated in the self locking brake no external force is required for braking and self locking for brake is not desirable and for clutch also not desirable but in the screw jack the self locking is desirable then after increase in the intensity of self energizing brake chance of self locking brake increasing more then after for bend brake there are two many equations are there t1 by t2 is equal to e raised to mu theta and braking torque is equal to t1 minus t2 into r as well as line pressure is equal to t tight upon b into r here note that in the self locking in differential bend brake b less than or equal to e raised to mu theta into a for clockwise rotation and a greater than or equal to e raised to mu theta into b for the counter clockwise direction and for simple bend brake p is equal to a by b into t2 and p is equal to a by b into t1 for counter clockwise rotation then after differential bend brake for that p is equal to t2 by c into b minus t1 by t2 into a and p is equal to t2 by c into b minus e raised to mu theta into a examples are it is used in the lifts elevators and conveyors etc examples for the bend brake because by the examples you can understand this questions very easily then there is a note there for tight side and slack side for the pulley which is driver the side of belt which is pulled is tight side and for the belt which is driven then side of the belt which will try to create a motion is the tight side this is very simple but the important point is there now coming towards the design of clutch there are four types of clutch is there first one is the jaw clutch then the plat clutch then the cone clutch and fourth one is centrifugal clutch you remember that the clutch permits engine to start without the external load and clutch connects or disconnects the input and output shafts at the will of the operator then generally clutches are of two types first one is of positive type clutch which is jaw clutch or claw clutch and second one is friction clutch which is plate clutch now the first one is positive clutch or you can say that jaw clutch or the claw clutch and it is used for the high speed disengagement and jaw clutch is mostly important for the engagement and disengagement in the situation like low speed and the high speed then no heat generation because of no friction and no slipping here engagement force is normal to the toe of the clutch then after the second one is the friction clutch or you can say that the plate clutch for this clutch pa is equal to pn so p engagement is equal to ps but pa is not equal to p engagement and here in this type of clutch engagement force will be axial to the clutch then pn is equal to p into 2 pi r into dr and t is equal to n into mu into r into pn 
then R1 is equal to R2 by root 3 for the maximum torque and there are two main terms are there first one is for new clutch uniform pressure and second one is for old clutch uniform wear so the equation for the both the terms will be very useful in the examination now for the first one now for the new clutch uniform pressure condition pn is equal to p into pi into r2 square minus r1 square and t is equal to n into 2 pi into mu into r2 cube minus r1 cube into p by 3 then the t is equal to 2 by 3 into n into mu p pi into r2 cube minus r1 cube so you can rearrange that then after t is equal to n into 2 by 3 into mu into pn into r2 cube minus r1 cube upon r2 square minus r1 square then the third equation is rf is for the friction radius so rf is equal to 2 by 3 into r2 cube minus r1 cube upon r2 square minus r1 square now for the old clutch pn is equal to 2 pi into p into r into r2 minus r1 and t is equal to n into pi into mu into p into r into r2 square minus r1 square then t is equal to n into mu into pn into r1 plus r2 by 2 and rf for the uniform wear type rf is equal to r1 plus r2 by 2 then t is equal to 2 by 3 into mu into pn into n into r2 cube minus r1 cube upon r2 square minus r1 square now there is a note there the wear theory is the more safe theory as well as the more conservative theory so if no theory is mentioned in the examination use the wear theory and the other note is there rf is proportional to t then rf for uniform pressure is greater than rf for uniform wear as well as torque for uniform pressure is greater than torque for uniform wear theory then after cone clutch for that sin alpha is equal to r2 minus r1 upon beta and 2 alpha is equal to cone angle then alpha is equal to semi cone angle or pitch angle then beta is equal to width of the friction pair and beta is equal to r2 minus r1 upon sin alpha then p engineering is equal to pn sin alpha plus mu into pn cos alpha pn into sin alpha is equal to pa and sin alpha is equal to pa upon pn then sin alpha is equal to r2 minus r1 upon beta then for the uniform pressure theory in the cone clutch pn is equal to 2 pi rd into r into p upon sin alpha then t is equal to 2 by 3 into mu into pn into r2 cube minus r1 cube upon r2 square minus r1 square then for uniform wear pn is equal to 2 pi p into r into r2 minus r1 then t is equal to mu into pa upon 2 into sin alpha into r2 plus r1 then t is equal to mu pn upon 2 into r2 plus r1 then t is equal to mu pn by 2 into r2 plus r1 and t is equal to 2 by 3 into mu p into pi upon sin alpha into r2 cube minus r1 cube then after t cone by t single plate is equal to 1 by sin alpha then t is proportional to 1 upon sin alpha and alpha is decreased then sin alpha is decreased then t will increase so by decreasing the torque carrying capacity t increase but we can reduce the alpha up to phi only because alpha should always greater than or equal to phi for self disengagement clutch then centrifugal clutch it is used for the low starting torque and the k is more speed is more and force is more then omega 2 is greater than omega 1 ps is equal to fc is equal to mrg into omega 1 square then fc is equal to mrg omega 2 square then t is equal to beta into m into mu into r g into omega 2 square minus omega 1 square into rd and beta is equal to m into rg into omega 2 square minus omega 1 square upon p into rd into theta here the engagement will be in the radial direction note that from the single plate clutch the mainly questions were asked in the examination the other two types were just for your information but do not skip this portion also now coming towards the design of bearings which is the last point of the subject now in that 
first one is HSB and the second one is HTV. Here HSB stands for hydrostatic bearing and HTV as you all know hydrodynamic bearing. Hydrostatic bearing in this high pressurized oil is imported inside the bearing by the pump and externally pressurized bearing then no starting or ending friction in the HSB then load carrying capacity is independent of the shaft speed and the advantages like good radial stiffness then disadvantages is more space required for this bearing and applications in the turbo generators now for the HTB or you can say that the hydrodynamic bearing P is generated because of the rotation of shaft inside the bearing and converging shape is there then in the starting the STB is same as like the journal bearing then metal to metal contact in the starting and ending so friction is more and high surface hardness required then high load and high speed is there then STB is used and applications are connecting road and crankshaft then disadvantages is not applicable for the frequent starting is required. Then journal bearing for that RF is near equal to R into mu. Then RF is equal to R into sin alpha. Then bearing characteristics go. So you can see that BCN is equal to mu into NS upon P. This is very important equation. Then for static load BCN is greater than T into K. And for dynamic load BCN is greater than 15 into K. Then K is equal to bearing modulus and epsilon is equal to eccentricity ratio epsilon is equal to e by e max is equal to e by c and epsilon is equal to 1 minus h naught by c then c is equal to r minus r is equal to e plus h naught where h naught is equal to minimum oil film thickness and capital r is equal to radius for the bearing and r is equal to radius for the shaft then the most important equation from the machine design portion in the bearing is Sommerfeld number S is equal to R by C square into mu n s upon P. Here S is equal to clearance ratio square into BCN also. Then there is one more important topic is there dynamic load carrying capacity or you can say that the dynamic load rating. The equation for this term is LTN is equal to C by P raised to Q into 10 raised to 6 cycles where Q is equal to 3 for ball bearing and Q is equal to 10 by 3 for the roller bearing then PE is equal to CS into X into V into FR plus Y into FA then L average is equal to L50 is equal to 5 into L10 then at L10 R is equal to 90% reliability is equal to 90% then F is equal to 10% and L10 is also equal to 60 into LH into N then rolling contact bearing is there in that dynamic load or fatigue load is applied and applications are in automobile or Excel or gearbox then in the rolling process rotate plus movement is there and wall bearing is weaker than that of the cylindrical bearing or roller bearing now Petrov's equation P is equal to W by 2 into R into L where P is equal to bearing pressure and T is equal to F into W into R then P is equal to W by L into D and F is equal to 2 pi square into R by C into mu n s by P which is known as the Petrov's equation then loss of power is equal to F into W into R into 2 pi n by 60 then Q is equal to H A delta T from these two equations there are so many times questions were asked then the limitation for the hydrostatic bearing is center of the shaft is at the center of the bearing then C is equal to R minus R so no leakage is considered and applicable only for the less loads my case equation is there F is equal to K plus 0.326 into R by C into mu n by P and K is equal to leakage factor value of k is equal to 0 0.002 t is equal to f into pnr then t is equal to f into w into r 
into omega then t is equal to f into p into u into r square then for axial thrust or thrust bearing p is equal to f by a so p is equal to f by pi by 4 into d2 square minus d1 square then for foot step bearing t is equal to f into w into r which is equal to f into pn into r so t is equal to 2 by 3 into pi into pn into f into r cube and power p is equal to t into w which is equal to 2 by 3 into pi into p into f r cube into w where w is equal to 2 pi n by 60 you can say that the omega also